So it's been a while since I've made an update video on this Project Planner AI side project that we've been working on. One of the new features that I kind of worked on was the ability for users to submit feedback. So if I go to my dashboard and I go to my thumbnail critique project, this is where I'm managing um, work items and other things for another project that I have, thumbnail critique. But over here on the left, we have a feedback section. So if I go to feedback, we can see feedback that was submitted by users. So right now, I think this is just some test data. But over here, if you click integration guide, you'll see a modal pop-up that tells you how to potentially integrate your own front-end or back-end projects to Project Planner AI, right? We have an API endpoint called feedback. You just go ahead and do a post request and you pass some body. There are some additional things I want to add to this modal. And maybe it doesn't even make sense to have this in a modal. Maybe it makes sense to have this in a documentation page. But I wanted to make this as quick as possible to get the information you need to copy it, and then you can go ahead and just add it directly in your project, right? So I'll just go ahead and like, for example, you could just paste this in, do a post request to that endpoint, pass in the name, the feedback, and your project ID, and everything should just work. So going to the actual thumbnail critique application, it's another side project I'm slowly trying to add features into where users can basically critique other people's thumbnails and review them. But if I go over to this feedback button, notice that we get a modal that pops up and someone can type in their name. So I'll say like Rick James, and I'll say, I need you to improve the landing page because it is bad. So that's gonna submit a post request to our own API here. And notice that that Rick James feedback request comes in. Now, again, there are some fields that are optional, which I'm not collecting over here. Like you could potentially add a title, you could add a type, etc. cetera. Um, but for the most part, I just want a name. And then I also want to be able to edit this and you'll see that the message comes up here and I can go ahead and say, for the title, I'll say better landing page. Go ahead and save that. And now we can actually view that feedback. I think Hosanna did a lot of the work on this table. It looks really nice and the, uh, the modals that pop up for the information. One thing that we did add in was the ability to take some user feedback. You could get a lot of this feedback and the messages could be quite long. And if you click on this AI suggestions button, basically it's gonna take the message information and it's going to pass that to GPT and it's going to convert it to what we call a like work item, right? So in this case, we can just go ahead and click import here and then we're going to go back to our work items. And now I have a nice work item that I could potentially assign to myself and, you know, just work on this when I get some free time. So that's the idea. I want to streamline feedback and get those into work items after you triage them so that you can actually work on them, you know, by yourself or if you're working on a team people can come through and see those and kind of do what they need to do with them. Now, this wouldn't be a web dev Cody video without talking about the code. So let's go ahead and talk about how this works in our side project planner application. So if I go to the app directory, I have a feedback route. So app API feedback route.ts. Let me zoom in for you. And this is just a endpoint that accepts a post request. I had to make sure I had core set up so that people from various domains can hit this endpoint. And once the post request comes in, I'm doing some really floppy validation logic here. A lot of these fields are optional, so I just kind of fall back on empty strings if you pass them in. But some of these are required. For example, we need a project ID and we need the feedback that the user is submitting. The name, the title, the email, like that's stuff that you could potentially opt into. Same thing with label or status. We're giving you the flexibility to build whatever modal or form that you want on your application so that you can submit the stuff that you think makes sense to get from your users. Obviously, the more feedback you ask for a user, the less likely they're going to do it. Um, and the cool thing is we are using Convex for our API. And so I'm actually invoking Convex with a mutation call here. That's gonna call another. So remember, Project Planner AI is using Convex for our backend as a service. And we have a public mutation that people can invoke. And so over here, we have some things that are potentially required. But the important thing to point out is uh, I have a rate limiter set up, so you can only submit this once every 10 seconds. And um, it's gonna be scoped based on your plan ID, right? So if someone tries to continuously flood your API with feedback requests, it's only once every 10 seconds they can do that. And then we finally end up you know, verifying that the plan ID exists in our database. And if it does, we'll just go ahead and insert that. I was considering if maybe we should have some type of like API token so that in order for you to submit feedback to our API, you have to have like a token created. But honestly, I don't know what that would gain anyone. I guess you could potentially, you know, quickly shut this off if someone's trying to abuse your feedback because you have a key 
that you could just revoke at any time. Um, but since we're not really charging for like how many times feedback comes into your plan, we don't do that. And also your plan ID is probably going to be private. Like no one's going to know about it um, unless they go and snoop through your code. But leave a comment if you think that we should be doing uh, like a API token type of thing. Um, so that in order to hit this endpoint, you do have to have an API token. Now in terms of how this works on my thumbnail critique application, I just have a, a form here. So over here we have a form. When that form gets submitted, I just call an on submit callback. It just does a request to Project Planner AI like this. I do a post request. I send over some fields, name, feedback, project ID. Yeah, so feel free to um, try it out. If you want to go to my thumbnail critique application and use it, try it out. Leave me some feedback because I'm going to be using this feedback table to read through your messages. Or you could be a troll and just send me a stupid message. I'm fine with that too. I'm just going to delete them. Yeah, I hope you guys uh, learned something new watching this. Um, also, I'm, I'm open to suggestions. So leave a comment if there's a better way you think I should introduce people to how to integrate with our API. I thought having this directly on this page is a little bit more clear, especially someone new to the application. They'll stumble upon this feedback page. They'll see this button. They're, they'll click it, hopefully, and then they'll say, oh, wow, I can actually just do a post request. So there is one more thing I want to talk about, which I plan to do if I get time. I want to ship components that you can just use in Next.js like automatically. So for example, you saw on this other page, I have a modal that pops up. It would be really cool if like you could just npm install project planner AI slash feedback component or something. And that would give you a form that has all the information you need. And when you click submit, it automatically does that request for you. I think that would also really help make this a lot easier to just hook up to your system. But honestly, I don't have analytics on like what users are actually building applications. And I wouldn't even know if I should be focusing on Next.js or just a React component. Anyway, those are my thoughts. I just want to share it with you all. Have a good day and happy coding.